The electromagnetic spectrum is the range of frequencies and wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. Frequency is symbolized by the Greek letter nu. Nu is measured by hertz or 1 over seconds. It is the number of wavelengths that pass a fixed point in one unit of time. Wavelength is symbolized by the Greek letter lambda. Lambda is the distance between any two identical points on adjacent waves. Frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, given by the equation c equals nu times lambda, where c is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Nu is frequency, and lambda is length. When frequency is doubled, wavelength is halved. At one end of the visible spectrum is high frequency and low wavelength, such as violet light. At the other end of the visible spectrum is low frequency and high wavelength, such as red light. Part of wave theory summarizes wave interference. Amplitudes, or the heights of waves, are additive. In a wave, there are crests and troughs. Crests are the maximum points on a wave, and troughs are the minimum points on a wave. During wave interference, crests will encounter other crests. This results in something called constructive interference, a crest twice as big as a crest without interference. Likewise, if a trowel were to encounter another trowel during interference, a trowel twice as big would form. However, if a crest and a trowel were to meet, they would cancel each other out. This is called destructive interference. Our eyes cannot tell the difference between crests and troughs, but we can see the brightness, or intensity, of the light given off by the waves. Intensity is proportional to amplitude squared. As much as wave theory tells us about light intensity and amplitude, it can't explain how electrons are ejected from the surface of a metal or other material when light shines on it. This is otherwise known as the photoelectric effect. There must be a threshold intensity required to eject electrons. Kinetic energy of ejected electrons depends on the frequency of light and not its amplitude. This means that there is a certain frequency that waves of light must reach before electrons are ejected from a certain metal or other material. In 1905, Einstein suggested the photoelectric effect, in which light consists of particles of electromagnetic energy called photons. The energy of each photon is proportional to its frequency. The function to figure out minimum energy required to release an electron is the work function. The work function is written as psi equals h times f sub zero. Max Planck quantized energy by stating that the constant for the energy of a photon is equal to h equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th power joules times seconds times its frequency. Classical physics doesn't explain why electrons are negative and an atom's nucleus is positively charged, yet atoms remain stable. However, Niels Bohr's postulate suggested that electrons can have only certain energy values called energy levels. A continuous spectrum contains all wavelengths of light, but the line spectrum that Bohr showed by quantizing energy levels shows only certain colors or specific wavelengths of light. This is because atoms only emit light when they are heated, and each atom has its own specific line spectrum. The energy level of a hydrogen atom is given by the following equation, where E is the energy level of the atom, RH is the Rydberg constant, and N is the principal quantum number. In describing the transitions between energy levels, when electrons move from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, the electrons must absorb energy, thus the change in energy will be positive. And when electrons move from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, the electrons must emit energy, and thus the change in energy will be negative. This idea is best represented by the energy level equation. Although it is impossible to know the exact location and momentum of any electron within an atom, each electron can be described by four quantum numbers. Principal quantum number n, angular momentum quantum number L, magnetic quantum number M sub L, 
and spin quantum number m sub s. The principal quantum number describes the energy of an electron. The smaller the value of n, the lower the energy, and thus the smaller the orbital. The principal quantum number can hold any positive integer value. The angular momentum quantum number describes the shape. It distinguishes the orbitals of a given n shell having different shapes. It can have any value to a maximum of n minus 1. Subshells are sometimes designated lowercase letters, such as L equals 0 is S, L equals 1 is P, L equals 2 is D, and L equals 3 is F. S is shaped like a sphere, P is shaped like a dumbbell, D is shaped like a clover leaf, and F is shaped like a multi petaled flower. The magnetic quantum number describes the direction or orientation of the orbital of a given energy and shape. This value depends on the angular momentum quantum number. It can hold any integer value from negative L to 0 to L. There will be a 2L plus 1 orbitals for each subshell. Spin quantum number describes the spin axis of an electron, of which there are only two possible orientations, positive 1 over 2 or negative 1 over 2. Positive 1 over 2 means the electron is spinning in the same direction as the external field, and negative 1 over 2 means the electron is spinning in the opposite direction as the external field.